a piddle of bricks out the wazoo. Yes, you are familiar with this concept. This city in Albi, France. Like Albi, but it's A-L-B-I. Albi, France. That's France for you in America. And it's the cathedral, the cathedral of Saint-Cécile. Saint-Cécile. And that is a brick cathedral, but not just any brick cathedral. It's massively bricked up. It's just an example of one of many. There's another one. There's a town almost identical to this in Poland. The whole town's made of bricks. The streets are made of bricks. All the walls are made of bricks. All the buildings are made of bricks. They go down many levels. There are tunnels all over the place, catacombs, all brick. Bricks out the wazoo. Bricks out every wazoo. <laughs> Just bricks everywhere. To count up the bricks, it numbers in the trillions in the world, as far as I can tell. And reportedly, and purportedly, the reports purport that this is the single largest homogenous brick building in the world, in the whole world, all over the world. It is the largest brick building. So we'll take a look at it. I know we've looked at it before a little bit, but we're going to take a look and let's look at how bricks are made. We're going to count this up, figure this out. So what we've got here is an automated machine. What I did is I looked up equipment for brick making and found one of the more modern, the ones nowadays. This was something I did back during regular life before pretend. I did it to see what the peak of civilization worldwide would find worthy of advertising is efficient and quick something that is affordable but highly productive a lot of bang for your buck with all of today's modern technology and knowledge but also accessible to nations all over the world such that it would be a technology that isn't so complicated or so new that it wouldn't have possibly existed in the 13th century when this cathedral, Saint Cecile, would have been built according to historical records. And you figure a town like that with that many bricks would have had an operation such as this going all the time. Well, I don't know. I mean, they couldn't really light it up at night very easily. So it would just be during the daylight hours. And then you have, you know, I guess winter they could still work. But yeah, it's a southern part of France. It's uh, be all right. So you just figure, okay, it's going to run, let's say, 16 hours a day every day. Cranking them out. Obviously, they didn't have forklifts. They had to use ox, oxen, ox carts, mules, horses, some just grit, you know, just some, what do they call it, elbow grease. Just the, the townsfolk, the, the young men in the town were lifting bricks like nobody's business. They were brick lifters, you know. And they did all this before vaccines. Somehow they survived. Somehow one can actually live without vaccines. It's some, it, there is, the immune system can work. It can work. Okay, so does just basic hygiene and that type of stuff. Not washing all the oils off your hands. That's stupid. At any rate, the way that bricks are made today, if you would compare, if you would go to this 
Albi region in France now. One must to appreciate French excellence. And incredible! Today, the way that bricks could be made should be comparable in the same way to the past as like Mr. Incredible versus Incrediboy. And Incrediboy! Who are you supposed to be? Well, I'm Incrediboy! What? No. You're that kid from the fan club. Brophy. Brody. B buddy. Buddy. My name is Incredible. Whereas today, the technology and the production rate and quality and of, of the bricks and how they're made, the process, should be something akin to the strength and stamina, etc., of Mr. Incredible versus the techniques and um, experience and abilities of Incrediboy. Okay, but let's hear what the French say about these bricks. Indestructible. Oh, la, 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 la. <laughs> I love it. I gotta hear that again. That's so French. Indestructible. Oh la 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 la. Qui rend ses reins indestructibles. <laughs> I love it. Okay, we gotta hear it again. I gotta hear it again. So good. Indestructible. Oh la 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 la. Qui rend ses reins indestructibles. Oh la 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 la. Oh la 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 la. <laughs> Just let you slap your hand on your open mouth. You know, do that. <laughs> oh, oh, the French. Oh, the French champagne. Has always been celebrated for its excellence. Ah, oh, the French champagne. Has always been celebrated for its excellence. I wouldn't go to France. All right. So that was place boing or placeboing, some call it, but I think he calls it place boing. I've loved that channel for a long time. Now, the bricks, the quality of the bricks, how long they last, all that stuff. There's a lot of detail we can go into. You think something is so simple. It's it's like a brick. You know, when when you say that somebody has the personality of a brick, <laughs> it's not a, a compliment to the their depth and complexity and nuances and sophistication. But there is a lot of sophistication and nuance to the age-old simple brick because, like many things, we just don't make them like that anymore. Boys, it just doesn't get any better than this. That is how the bricks are that you find. They're in such great abundance. People have forgotten how they were made, when they were made, exactly how they were made so well. And we'll talk more about that with concrete and other things and other videos. But in this video with the bricks, you take them for granted. Ha, 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 ha. No, you take them for granted when you have so many. But to do something like this today, it is inconceivable, nigh upon inconceivable, even with the technologies that we have. So they have this description of it, and it says it's Southern French Gothic. Now, 
Southern French Gothic may be a thing that they've made up, but I'm sure you can find one in any country almost in the world. For example, in Poland, there are cathedrals exactly like this. Now, the Roman bricks differed in size and shape from ancient bricks, and the Roman bricks were a technology that were rediscovered over time, they say. <laughs> How could it be? The way bricks were made, it was highly advanced, they say, but they have destroyed many brick buildings by fire. Now bricks don't burn in fires. They're literally resistant to fire. But in the year 1666, they had one fire. And bricks were transported across the ocean, they say. And only during the mid-18th century did bricks become popularized again. They rediscovered bricks. And it was a hundred years later, which would be 1850, ha, 1850, where bricks finally standardized into a more volumetric industrial production method using machines. Machines to make a whopping 12,000 bricks a day in only in 1925. Yet today, machines aren't necessarily used in the production of bricks. And they say that by hand, you can make up to 36,000 bricks per week in a big production facility. Bricks were red, they say, from the temperature fired, yet they also say they use dyes. And the bricks were more red in the past than they can possibly be today. In fact, they made the buildings almost glow. They were so red, they could be seen in fog. Yet it's all so faded now, but it does have that blood color to it. So let's take a look at how these bricks were made manually before 1850. The entire process of how manual clay bricks are made in India. India. Manual. This is the chimney which is almost 105 feet high. 104. And this emits the smoke when bricks are baking in the kiln. Kiln. You're killing me. Iron bricks has been quite older and the strongest building material and they are weather resistant as well. Hence, they are quite satisfactory building material. Building blocks, you might the say. The entire process of making one load of brick from preparing clay dough to drying, baking and cooling can take up to two weeks. Two weeks. A load is like a thousand or so. Now, keep in mind, the one dome in Florence has a and four million. A sufficient amount of clay dough and put it into the brick mold, followed by some dry soil or sand. Play-Doh. The clay dough is pressed by hand so that it fills all the corners of the mold with clay. And, and then extra <laughs> clay on the top is removed by hands. And then put it <laughs> gently on the ground and lift up the mold and repeat the process. Over and over and over and over and over again. Now, yeah, keep in mind that one brick dome in Florence at the cathedral, that had four million bricks in it. Just the dome. It's a double shell. It's back-breaking work, but, but it looks fun to play with the Play-Doh. And they, they make swastikas on these bricks. It doesn't mean whatever. Man, that's dude. Get a table, dude. Get a table and stand up. And don't bust your back. I mean, I'm sure you must be fine, but my gosh. Dude, you got legs for a reason. <laughs> you got legs. God gave you legs. Use them. Back-breaking work. Oh, I swear. And, okay, left in the sun for drying. So, so how do you do it in... 
Limerick, Ireland. How do you do it in freaking Siberia? They have tons of bricks out there, Wazoo. I swear it doesn't make sense. Ready for baking bricks. Coal used for baking bricks. Now this oven, they're standing over a red hot oven. It's hell. There's hell. Baking of bricks should be done properly to get good quality bricks and the ideal temperature is between 900 degrees Celsius to 1100 degrees Celsius. If they are baked beyond this limit, they will be brittle and easy to break, while if they are baked under the limit, they will be susceptible to absorb moisture. Just like people today, either brittle or doughy. <laughs> uh, I've been watching too many Lincoln Kareem videos. <laughs> Zombies walking in to get the jab at Jabbit Center. Swastika. Is less baked, which are not properly baked and they are not very good quality and are susceptible to absorb moisture from atmosphere. I think the swastika Second is, is well baked bricks. These are properly baked bricks. Calling to mind sites. symbolically Hyperborea, you know, the four rivers coming out from the center. Polar vortex. And third is broken bricks. These are the damaged quality of bricks. They make broken bricks? Uncalled for. Stop making broken bricks. <laughs> Ever think of it before? <laughs> I love that stuff. Yeah, yeah. Worked a career in quality. <laughs> Why do you make broken bricks? <laughs> <laughs> Nonsense. That dude's still squatting, man. Papa squat. Beautiful, beautiful. Now area. remember, they couldn't make bricks automatically until the mid 1800s. The life of the Navi would have been a hard existence, hard physical labor. They made the four million bricks that were needed for the flight, plus the two million that was needed for the Savanac Tunnel, and excavated this huge structure crawling up the hillside, pretty much all dug, executed by hand. So when we think about the brick walls that we can see here in these locks, all of those bricks were made by hand. The clay was excavated by hand from a site just to the south here and the navvies excavated that clay. It would have been trod on the ground for two or three days, watered, the stones picked out of it, and then thrown into timber moulds, and then stacked and dried in the fields for two or three days, and then up to one to three months of turning them till they were dried. So when we think of the time that could be taken to produce a batch of a thousand bricks, could be anywhere between over a month to a maximum of three months, and Rennie needed three and a half to four million to complete the construction. Well, finish the thought. I'll finish it for you. That dog don't hunt. Because look, how many months a year in jolly old England can you even set anything out in the sun to dry? <laughs> Honestly maybe three months out of the year if you're lucky i mean what happens when it rains on it does it just start the thing over again or how does it dry you have to cover it up every time it rains or what and that's to make a batch of a thousand bricks taking months and yet they made uh well they said four million but then another two million and that's just for this tunnel they found and the, just for the locks and different things like that and the flight yeah, and if it's so hard to make the dang bricks, you know, if they're so in demand, why would they be 
making them and just like paving roadways with them and just making like little like garden walls with them and things like that. It doesn't add up. It really doesn't. Where every town in the world, every city in the world has zillions of bricks, you know, for different things. I mean, just look at Liverpool. Beneath Liverpool, there are countless tunnels. There's like, I think it's like eight or nine levels of huge tunnels that giants could walk through with underground cathedrals. I'll say that again. There are underground cathedrals under Liverpool. Huge. All brick, man. And then like double wall thickness and things like that. And they say it was philanthropic. Super secret, subterranean, philanthropic architecture. Yeah. Now, remember, there are buried brick tunnels and things. There are more bricks than can be known. And yet, that's just the bricks. That's the basic material. Look at the rest of the construction of this Saint-Cécile Cathedral. I mean, bricks are just part of it. And then you have these ancient tunnels of the attempted was actually made. channel the tunnel that there. were Perhaps dug out with the ancient drilling machines and bricked and up. About it, says Joe Noble, There's a whole plethora and world of construction projects hidden under the ground level yet to be discovered and it's almost always brick all these bricks were made for these things and how many bricks have been destroyed we also know that the whole of human history only goes back about six thousand years that's the facts theories yeah theories are out there for more you see it a lot even in this community, but as far as I can tell, 6,000 years, even the Masons say that. So yeah, how many bricks are out there? I saw the top search result from Reddit is saying something like 27 billion. Ha, ha, ha. Even Europe has way more than that. It has to number in the trillions. I mean, there's no other way to look around, look at it, you know? Just look around. Okay, so this this cathedral in Ilan, this is, they say, built, I think, in the year 10-something, 10, 10 or 11, really early on in the millennial reign of Christ, but, you know, a thousand years before that, I think. And it has a double brick, or a double-walled brick dome, just like Florence, and it's pretty damn big. I mean, it's not over 100 feet span but it is around 100 feet in span the one dome and so <laughs> so that technology all that nonsense about the the guy who built the mysterious guy who never built anything in his life got selected to build the brick dome and he wouldn't tell them how he was going to do it you know that video i made that's about florence cathedral that's <laughs> Just look at the lantern on top of the Florence Cathedral. That is so heavy. The lantern is how many tons? It's just ridiculous. That's four million bricks in that thing. And that's just what remains. How many bricks have been broken down? We've heard of brick yards, like stock yards. They have existed for a long time. At one point in history, they were made so quickly and easily. I think it would have taken about a thousand years to have all these bricks made. And who and how and did they sleep? <laughs> did they use machines that have been lost to history? Something, there has to be some explanation. Did it rain down from heaven? I found something about brick rain, but I think it's just the brick color of the rain. What caused that? Some catastrophe of already built brick buildings perhaps like the dust bowl i think that is the fallout from some destructive operation going on that has been hidden behind the shroud the curtain of history that is still just out of reach but at least we know the curtain is there 
and we're going to find out what's behind it here at the UAP channel. Thanks for joining me. See you next time. Bye-bye.